Bonjour et bienvenue sur le plateau des Eco Lifestyle. Nous avons le plaisir de recevoir aujourd'hui le CEO de Pomelato, la célèbre entreprise italienne de joaillerie. Mr. Morante, good afternoon. Thank you for being here with us. We're going to speak English. And um, can we make, first of all, a brief history of the company in a way to show, to explain to other people who are looking at us how Pomelato introduced the prêt-à-porter in the world of jewelry? Okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to apologize that I speak in English. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the most brands, I would argue, have um, a specific DNA components um, or visions, if you will, mm -hmm. that normally the founder transmits in, within the company. In our particular case, I think uh, the founder transmitted four ingredients uh, which helped the development of the company over time. And the first one is production, the second one is innovation, the third one is creativity, and the fourth one is being on the side of women. Mm -hmm. If you look at production, that means that uh, the founder really comes from a goldsmith family himself. So he argues that when he was a child, he was already breathing uh, gold. Uh, and he was in Italy. In Italy, in Italy, in Italy near Milano, yeah. outside mm -hmm. Milano. And uh, so he has this uh, sort of uh, family-driven uh, tradition. Mm -hmm. His grandfather, grandfather was already looking at ways of creating a seamless uh, wedding ring. Mm -hmm. uh, and so whenever it came to production, he was always A, very competent, and B, very demanding. Uh, even today, and he's no longer associated with the company, if I tell him that a manager left the company, he really doesn't care that much. But if I tell him that an artisan left the company, I will spoil his day. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that gives you an, an idea of how important production mm -hmm. is as a, as a historical element. The second one is really to do with innovation and goes to your point uh, of um, Pino Rabolini, that's the name of the yeah. founder. Mm -hmm. He's a very curious individual and he always wanted to see things in a very unconventional way. That was his interest. So when he lo looked at the jewelry industry and saw that people were actually wearing jewelry for a special occasion and then they were taking the jewelry and bring it back in a, in a safety box or yeah. to, the to the bank, even if it was very mm -hmm. valuable. <laughs> And so he thought that that was something wrong with that, okay? Mm -hmm. So he started arguing that something different could be done. And I think he was very much influenced by two individuals, by Pierre Carden, and Pierre Carden gave him the hint of becoming more accessible, They available. Were They weren't friends, but, but Pino still today respects a lot what Pierre Carden has done for the okay. industry. Mm -hmm. And the other person is Armani, who in a way was doing with uh, fashion and with ready-to-wear mm -hmm. something similar that he was interested in. In other words, he was sort of changing, the, the women were changing the way they wanted to dress. Mm -hmm. And so Pino thought, well, maybe I should also change the way women wear jewelry. So that's where the concept of pret a porter was introduced. And I think that Pomelato is in fact sort of considered one of the brands who has made this uh, transformation early on. Then there is the uh, third element, which is creativity. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pino, from the initial day of the founding of the company, every year he did a collection every year, which is again very unusual for mm -hmm. the industry. So he forced a huge uh, element of creativity within the company. Uh, and so uh, this translates also to the fact that we obviously have fantastic archives over the years uh, of things that can become very inspirational, designs that can inspire us uh, after many years. So that's, I think, another strong point. And the fourth point is uh, the one on uh, ma making a choice of being really on the side of women. This is a concept which is perhaps not easy to understand initially, but you, because you could argue that every jeweler, you know, by definition is on the side of we women. We hope so, we hope so. <laughs> But I think that uh, uh, Pino has, you know, pushed th this uh, argument a little bit further uh -huh. in terms of communication, in mm -hmm. terms of advertising, in terms uh, of uh, respecting very much what a sophisticated woman really wants uh, and really trying to establish a very privileged dialogue with her mm -hmm. and not necessarily with him.
Okay? And, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, you could argue that these uh, choices have certain important pros, but mm -hmm. they can have also certain uh, okay. cons. So, Pomelato was a family company until it was purchased last April by uh, Keering, former PPR. Mm -hmm. uh, does it change your goal for the future? Yes, I think that um, the decision was a decision uh, that whereby the family took two very unusual decisions, if mm -hmm. you will. The first one is uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Pino Rabolini retired from the business when he was relatively young. So he made a very sort of unusual move uh, of transforming early on the company into a management you know, driven company, mm -hmm. not longer a family driven company which is again unusual. And then the second element uh, is that once he spoke with his son, he realized that his son had other interests uh, in life, uh, and therefore the issue of continuity, which normally is an important issue mm -hmm. for family, family mm -hmm. companies, uh, that issue was, was resolved in the sense that really Pomelato had really two different alternatives. Either it would go public mm -hmm. and become a public company, or in fact uh, it would join an important group that could help Pomelato develop over the, uh, over the future. And uh, Pino Rabolini's was the, the choice of, of, the, of the PPR now caring group was made in a way early on because they met each other, the, the mm -hmm. two founders the two, uh, yeah. the, the met each other, they liked each other a lot. Uh, there was, which is important. Which is you know, this mm -hmm. you know, chemistry whereby Pino felt uh, that by putting uh, Pomelato in the hands of caring, so to mm -hmm. speak, uh, that he was doing himself a favor and he was doing the company a favor. And so okay. that was a very convincing argument. Uh, and, uh, and that's how the whole sort of transition uh, started. Mm -hmm. So does it change, I, I repeat my question, does it change your goal for the future? Do you have changed the... Uh, Strategic well, plans? I think that it changes the ambitions. Mm -hmm. The goals remain the same, uh, but the ambitions p perhaps can become a little bit wider and more global. Mm -hmm. so You're already the fourth uh, jewelry in Europe mm -hmm. and one of the key players in the world. Do you have plans to increase this, uh, this uh, um, position? Yes, and I think that uh, caring can help exactly achieve uh, the uh, specific uh, strategic uh, sort of objective that we have in mind. Uh, as you may know, within the jewelry industry, there aren't that many brands uh, that are actually global brands. Mm -hmm. There are very few. There's only three. Yeah. I would argue that there's only three. And then there is a number of other brands uh, which perhaps are strong in America. They may be strong in Europe, like in our case, or they may be uh, strong somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I think that among those important regional players, uh, like we are in Europe, uh, there will be the possibility for those companies to become a global brand. And I think that Caring can certainly help us uh, achieve this uh, ambition mm -hmm. of becoming more relevant, both in the Americas, where we are already present, but not as present as we would like to be, but certainly also in the Pacific, where clearly there is an important market to take advantage mm -hmm. of. And over the years, you've opened your own stores. How many stores do you have uh, in the world? Well, between, because we have two, two brands, as you know, one is Pomelato and the other one is Dodo. We have you know, okay. a second brand. Mm -hmm. Between the two of them, we have roughly 86, 87 stores. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would argue that uh, 45, 46 are Pomelato and the balance is Dodo. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the time being, as I was saying before, there is a higher concentration in Europe. Okay? Even today, unfortunately, I would argue that 45% um, you know, of our sales are still in Italy and it's going down. This is your first market still. It is yeah. our still, uh, still our first market. And we're trying to make sure that it remains an important market for us for all sorts of reasons. But at the same time, our objective is clearly to reduce the percentage of the Italian market uh, to the advantage of both the European, the American and the uh, Pacific yeah. region. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are the proportion between Europe, uh, United States and Asia? Well, today Europe is still, you know, more than 70% of our business. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So then we have roughly 14 to 15 percent in America. And then the rest is scattered between the Gulf region and the okay. Pacific region. And, and so, yeah, so do you plan to open stores in, in Asia Pacific? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the key question is uh, not only how to expand in the Pacific in areas where we're not as present, like, for example, China, which for most companies is already a huge opportunity, uh, already taken advantage of. For us, it's a huge opportunity that we did not take mm -hmm. advantage of. So. But, you know, I would say that also in our case, Japan is a very important market because we are a sophisticated product and therefore we need also sometimes to for the market to be already ready, so to speak, for our mm -hmm. product. And, and as a result, uh, the Japanese market, which is a very sophisticated market, is certainly uh, has a lot of attraction for us. Mm -hmm. um, you have two brands, you just told us, yeah. Dodo yeah. and Pomelato. What are the specific of the two uh, of the two brands? Yes. Well, first of all, it's very unusual for once you have a brand to develop another brand. Another one, yeah. It's very mm -hmm. unusual and there aren't that many companies who mm -hmm. do that. Normally you do extensions, you know, product extensions, but you don't develop another brand. I think the reason why 18 or 19 years ago now we developed a new Dodo brand is to reach out to a wider, younger audience mm -hmm. by having a product which was more accessible in terms of price, but at the same time it was made by Pomelato, so it had the same the DNA, product yeah. DNA, DNA that I was referring okay. to before. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it also introduced a concept which would turn out to be a very also uh, a visionary concept uh, of the attention to the environment. A dodo mm -hmm. is an animal which is now extinct. Mm -hmm. So even in the choice of the brand, a decision was made, this is 19 or 20 years ago, a decision was made, we have to do something which A, reaches out to a younger crowd, B, is very attentive to the environment, and C, it has an, an accessible price point. Uh, without, however, putting into uh, question or into jeopardy the quality of the product itself. So the customers are very different. From well, initially there was uh, there was a clear sort of uh, uh, broader audience which was younger. Mm -hmm. But funnily enough, after a while, the mother was buying for the children, but mm -hmm. then she was wearing it as well. And then the grandmother was buying it for the for the uh, grandchildren, and she was wearing it as well. So we found ourselves in Italy. I'm talking about the Italian market predominantly, which is really cross generational, and that has surprised us. I mean, we were going in one direction, and we found ourselves talking so that's to. That's successful. That's very successful, but it wasn't uh, really intended. But we were very happy that we achieved mm -hmm. it. <laughs> so we wish good luck for the next few months, and thank you for being here with us. Et je vous donne tous rendez-vous la semaine prochaine sur le plateau des Eco Lifestyle.